tanks are the center of a lot of misinformation. Whether it be from online communities or old propaganda, myths seem to be very prevalent. We're going to be taking a look at a handful of them, to see just how accurate they are. First up, there's one really odd myth I've seen making the rounds, and that is that the T-28 Super Heavy Tank was used in the Korean War, and that it even saw combat. There are some pretty obvious red flags here, so it shouldn't be at all surprising that this isn't true. For one thing, the US military doesn't make a habit of putting unproven equipment in the field, the only notable exception I can think of for this rule, at least when it comes to tanks, was the M26 Pershing. The T-28 never entered service. It was only used for experimentation. Furthermore, the T-28 would have been useless in Korea. Korean battlefields were dominated by steep hills and mountains, which don't get along well with underpowered vehicles. The T-28 had a particularly abysmal power-to-weight ratio. Even if it did manage to get to a fight, you'd be better off using a Pershing or Sherman anyway. There's one final nail in the coffin for this myth, and that's the fact that while the Korean War was going on, the US Army didn't actually know where the T-28 was. It had been lost around 1947, and it wasn't found again until the 1970s, sitting behind a bush in an open field. So where does such a peculiar myth come from? Well, it actually comes from an April Fool's article written by Nicholas Moran, aka The Chieftain. Some people just don't notice the date, so they think it's a genuine article. Next myth is fairly common. Some people think that modern tanks have obvious shot traps. Tanks like the Abrams and Leopard 2 are mentioned specifically. Some people think that the Abrams upper front plate will send the round bouncing into the turret ring, or that the Leopard's wedges will send the round into the roof. I think games are mainly to blame for this one. In modern tank-on-tank -tank combat, the main shell you're going to be hit with is APFSDS, armor-piercing fin stable the Scarding Sabo. APFSDS doesn't really bounce. It either penetrates or it shatters. On extreme angles, specifically around 80 degrees, it starts to shatter reliably. And not by coincidence, the Abrams upper front plate is also angled at around 80 degrees. So it's pretty much impossible for a kinetic round to bounce into the turret ring. As for the Leopard, the wedges on the turret are basically hollow metal structures. APFSDS is going to punch right through before it gets stopped by turret armor. As I said earlier, I think games are to blame for this myth. War Thunder specifically does not model shattering. Well, it does. It just never happens. I've only seen a shell shatter once in my entire time playing. So people just see darts bouncing into turret rings left and right, and assume that's how things work in reality. Moving on, there's the idea that all T-34s were terribly built. There's some fact and some fiction in this one. When T-34s were first introduced, they had a number of faults and poor design decisions. Most notably, unreliable transmissions, using polished steel and periscopes, and engines that tended to overheat. But the Soviets didn't let these issues go unresolved. The T-34 was vastly improved in the years to come, and proved to be very effective. People will point to welds on newer T-34s as evidence of their claim, but the quality varied wildly from plant to plant. Some had to cut corners to meet quotas, or simply had different manufacturing processes. In many cases, these issues were acknowledged and then simply forgotten, because making two okay tanks was better than making one perfect one. The Soviets also weren't working under the best conditions, since they had to relocate factories. At any rate, I think this idea persists, because the Soviets pumping out low-quality stuff in high volume is a stereotype, and it's one they really don't deserve. And finally, since the M4 Sherman is the center of a lot of myths, why not go out on one? It's commonly thought that, since the original Sherman had a low-velocity gun, it wasn't meant to fight tanks. First of all, the M4 didn't use a low-velocity gun, or a howitzer as some call it. The M3 is actually a medium-velocity gun, and for the time, had good penetration characteristics. In fact, the M4's gun was also the main anti-tank gun of the US Army at that time. Furthermore, the claim that M4s were not meant to fight tanks is patently false. Their primary role was exploitation, better described as marauding behind enemy lines. When they were performing this action, it was assumed that they would have to fight tanks, and they were armed to reflect that. Anyway, that wraps up the video. As always, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.